Buying your first laser is really exciting, but there is a few things you'll want to check before purchasing to ensure you don't end up with a boat anchor. The first thing to check is that your laser uses a standard system for mounting centers and other accessories into the headstock and tailstock. Most wood layers use a system called Morse Taper 2, and that's just a precisely machined taper that simply locks together using static friction. If your lathe doesn't use this system, then finding accessories like live and drive centers for your lathe will be very difficult, and you could end up wasting your time trying to find something that works. I'd strongly recommend avoiding any layers that don't use a Morse Taper 2 system for both ends of the lathe. Another thing to check is that your lathe uses a common thread size on its spindle for mounting things like face plates and scroll chucks. Here in Australia, the most common spindle thread size is a metric thread called M30 by 3.5, but other common sizes include M33 by 3.5, 1 inch by 8 TPI, and 1 inch by 10 TPI. There are other standard thread sizes out there, but you might find it difficult to find parts for them, at least in Australia, so it's worth a Google before committing. An easily adjustable tool post with a standard tool post diameter is something that catches a lot of people out when they're buying second hand. During a project, you're going to be moving that tool post countless times to ensure that you keep a safe tool overhang and can get into places that you need to so having something that is quick and easy to adjust is vital on top of that having a standard tool post shaft diameter is just as important as you will want to change your post out for shorter or longer versions or even curved ones depending on what operation you're doing in Australia the most common size is a one inch diameter shaft or 25 millimeters but there are plenty of options out there for you if you have a 30 millimeter or a 5 8 of an inch shaft but you might just find yourself paying a little bit more for these as they are less common. Now having some form of variable speed is vital. A lathe that changes speed with a belt change is the least desirable as these often only allow for either four or five fixed speeds and they're often not even the optimal speed for the operation that you're performing. It will do the job in most cases, but it is definitely a compromise. A Reeves pulley or a lever controlled speed change is better as you get a much larger speed range, though it does require the lathe to be spinning to adjust the speed, but it's not a big deal and it's a massive upgrade compared to changing belts, so I have no problem recommending this option. Now the final form of speed control is electronic speed control, and this is considered one of the best options as it's controlled with just a twist of a dial and you can really fine tune your speeds and get the best out of your lathe. But with those fancy electronics, does come the higher price tag and the potential for those electronics to fail or go wrong the older they get. So it's not without its drawbacks, it's just those drawbacks are further down the road and it's a future problem. Now the last consideration is something that we should consider for every machine and that is a suitable working height. The center of the lathe should fall just below the elbow in a standing position. This will give you the best control of your tools and feel the most comfortable while turning. If the height of the lathe is too high or too low, you will need to build a platform for either yourself or the lathe to sit on. Ensuring the lathe is a good working height is the first thing you should do before turning it on. Having this properly set will improve your turning experience far more than any tool or accessory will, and it will keep you turning for longer. If you can make sure these five things are found on your lathe, whether it be a new or secondhand unit, you're gonna have a lathe that is easy to find accessories for, is pleasant to use and is comfortable to stand behind for hours on end while making ribbons. If you want to check out our range of wood turning lathes and other machinery, we'll have links to those in the description below. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please click that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have some lathe buying tips for others, please leave them in the comments below and we can get that discussion started and make this video a little bit of a learning resource for everyone. Anyway, that's it. We'll see you next time and happy turning.